day, it's more Overwatch League action time. That's right, our third series of the day. It's going to be Quang Zhou Charge taking on the Chengdu Hunters. This one should be really fun. It's always fun to watch Hunters with their crazy style. And uh, Quang Zhou Charge, you know, this might be their moment to start kind of breaking out, getting some wins. Well, we touched on this a lot in, in the previous stage right. that especially Guangzhou has had such a rough time of it, and that has resulted in the Hunters in Charge being placed at 14th and 15th, yeah. respectively, in the standings. So these wins are really important, too, because, again, you need to get at least to number 12 in the rankings to get to that play-in for the playoffs at the end of the season. So they're kind of just on the outside looking in today. So really, and we mentioned this in the first series we cast today, uh, from now on, a lot of the matches are really important in terms of overall stage playoff or overall season playoff implications, that is. Yeah, and you know, for a team that has a less than 50% win rate, it doesn't really matter right now because if you can come in hot to the playoffs, so because it's a play-in between that seventh and 12th place position, even if you have a worse record at the end of the season, if you've climbed up and are coming in really hot into that playoff bracket, you can make one of those last two playoff seeds. Yeah, certainly possible. Now, one thing that might help out the charge at this stage is their strength of schedule. It's actually the easiest in the league in terms of the strength of their opponents overall. And this is another thing we talked about in stage two, especially in the end of stage one, they had a brutal schedule as far as who they were facing. Gets a bit easier from now on, doesn't it? Yeah, you look at the Guangzhou charge, you know, over their last 10 matches so it's at the tail end of stage one into stage two, they had to play the Shock twice, they had to play the Titans twice. It's been really difficult and there were some, I think, questionable losses they had in there, most sure, particularly yeah. when they got dominated by Paris, which was sort of the outlier here. But now it's time for Guangzhou with this easy schedule to show us that they are going to be a top 12, a playoff capable team. That's right. Speaking of the charge, let's welcome them now. Our first team in this series, the Guangzhou Charge. Here they come, the Guangzhou Charge. New theme music, I believe. Yeah, that is. It's different from last it's exciting. Time. Yeah. I definitely didn't expect that. All right. We're getting high fives <laughs> from all the people with the panda hats. I think yeah. those people really like the Chengdu Hunters. I was going to say, I, I think they're, uh, I think they're like <laughs> Trojan fans. They're pretending to be, but they're really fans of the other team. But we'll see. The Charge again. You know, we talked about their strength of schedule. I would say, you know, from what we've seen, the Hunters are probably going to be one of the toughest opponents they face here in stage two. So a win here would be a great start. Yeah, absolutely. And they do have a new weapon as well in Nero, a player that has turned 18 during our stage two to stage three break. So yeah. will we see him not starting, but later on in this match? Been hearing good things about that guy. So uh, hopefully we do, but their opponents are gonna be tough to beat. It's gonna be the Chengdu Hunters. Let's hear it for your team of the day, the Chengdu Hunters. Why do you think they have all that do not cross tape in their uh, training facility? They don't want to hurt anyone accidentally <laughs> if they come in there, man. There are weapons Danger, flying wildly. Dangerous, dangerous yeah. Chengdu Hunter. I, I would sure. want to be in there with Bacon Jack and his quarter staff. <laughs> whatever else. People I love it. It was, it was terrifying. Well, here they are. The Chengdu Hunters are ready to fight. IRL, they'll fight to IRL, Monty. I could take a 1v6. <laughs> we'll find out. That's, that's next year's All-Star match, right? I love wow. it, though. That's complex. Oh, they lost a hat? Oh, no. OK, I'll give them like a 9 out of 10 for that one. If it wasn't for the hat coming off, it would have been a perfect formation. We'll see if they can bring that coordination to the uh, online battle. I love the them. Overwatch League itself. Yeah, I love the Hunters, and we are going to see Among starting here. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of chatter has come around from the fact that Jichiren is now here, another main tank player on this roster. Yeah, Jichiren coming in as uh, the main tank that kind of is all, had always planned on using, but just wasn't able to make it. They tweeted today that he had swam all the way 
from Asia, <laughs> and that's why it took him this long to get here. It's been a couple stages, but he's here. He's in the building, I would assume. He's just not on the stage quite yet. Hopefully, we'll see him later. But it's exciting to have two new eligible players, one on each of these two teams. And as you say, hopefully we will see them later in the set if they have had that time to gel. Nero has been here all season with the team. So he's been right. in the practice facility the entire time. Uh, Jicheren is a little bit newer uh, to the American side of things. Yeah, we'll see what he can do uh, later if they decide to go ahead and play him. But uh, either way, again, it's only the first match of the stage for both of these two teams. but. When you look at the overall standings, it's a big one for both of them. Should be a fun time. And I wonder, you know, with Chichi Ren coming in for the Hunters too, uh, is that going to affect their overall style, right? They've been very distinct big question. on that wrecking ball, but we'll talk about that more later. Let's take a look at our map set brought to you by Toyota. Oasis will be the first map of this series. Then Volskaya for Assault Eichenwald for our hybrid map. And finally, Dorado on Escort. And you never know. We might need that fifth and final tiebreaker map. We needed it already once today. Could happen again, I think, pretty easily in this match, honestly. As we look at the Chengdu Hunters, uh, we, I, our stats analyst, Captain Planet, has some really cool new team fight metrics for this stage. And one of the things is Chengdu Hunters last stage were winning 54.1% of their team fights with Farah. It was their most successful composition. Okay. But they only won 44% when they ran one of their three Farah comps against Winston 3 3. Interesting. So Guangzhou obviously ready for this one. Jinmu coming in. Yeah, I lean on the Sombras. We've actually got Sombras on both sides as we get things started here in the university. At Oasis. Uh, lean, right. Usually going to be on the Sombra in these control points here for the Guangzhou Charge. That typically has Ooh. been his style. Winston comes up to say hello to Jinmu, but he is ready. Getting the healing right away. Maybe all tall. Keeping him alive. Happy actually takes a lot of damage there. Dangerous point for him. Gets back under cover for now, but it is going to be Charge getting that early control, but not quite flipping into their favor yet. Hotpa out of the mech. That's good for the Hunters. Can they chain this into a fight win, though? Uh, they should be able to. Farah rockets a lot so. more dangerous when you don't have the defense matrix. Also, Yang Zhaolong going to be poking in range right oh, here. Eileen coming in with the EMP and gets Kyo. That was a fast EMP, man. Kyo drops almost immediately before Eileen backs out. Nobody's taking the point yet, but it looks like Charge might finally do it. They do, despite being pushed back. They've got the early percent. EMP now for Elsa, though. Shoot, just roasting people from the ground. Why not? Jinmu flying a little bit too close to the Moira there. Sound barrier for charge. This match has been fast and furious. They're actually going to go down and chase Amon. Well, why not, though? Get the tank out of the way, and Hunter's sent back to spawn again. Yeah, going back to that, Show uh -oh. opening with the Winston 3-3, I think, is going to be the key here. Rio still going crazy on that back line. Picks continue to come in. Yeah, Young Zhao Long, though, pops attack visor, takes on Hotba, gets Rio before he drops into the pit here, and Chengdu flips it right around. That Valkyrie combination with the TAC Pfizer earns them the point back. Only 30% going over to the charge, so quick retake on the side oh. of the Hunters. <laughs> Amon going to body block Eileen in there, gets a punch in the end for good measure. That Translocate did not take Eileen too far that time. <laughs> that was a nice block one there. 30% for the charge, that's what they achieved in their first Hold of the point. Watch Keo's positioning right now. Be trying to dodge out this EMP. Should know that they have it, and we'll have to use that trance in order to be efficient. Yeah, Eileen really thinking about trying to EMP so the fire falls uh, off the edge. If he can get, if he can catch Jinmu in the right position, Keo gets hacked here. Wait for it. Elsa, ooh, got the health back just in time. That was a close call. Yeah. Also gets the EMP now, so both teams with the Sombra ultimates up. Yep, Elsa hacked, or uses the EMP, rather. Rio has to back away. Eileen down. Amon with an early kill there. It's going to be charged, flipping the point back again. They managed to push the Hunters off for just long enough to switch it over. Now Amon, back and Wayman taking a lot of damage. You control that three kill from Hotba. Really? How did he catch them with that? I, I don't know. That Crazy. doesn't look like that should have happened. So Hotba somehow catches both of their supports and a third. And we didn't quite see the angle the on that. self destruct. Yeah, that was good. Let's let's check out what happened there. Yeah, taking a look at Hotba. All right. Yeah, just toss it off to the ah, side. Ah, nice ah, setup yep. there. 
Rio around the corner with the Primal Rage, making sure to knock them into line of sight. Oh, well, this is an EMP. Eileen decides to back away before using it. Everyone kind of packed in there for the Hunters, though, so they do need to be concerned. It's such an easy point to get EMP'd on because of the big open nature of it. Yeah, late swap two from the Hunters to the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, EMP, easy kill on the Among there. A lot of members on Chengdu EMP. They back away, but they're going to lose a lot of people on the way out here. The problem when you swap so late, Doa, is that you don't have time to charge those ultimates, especially when they have EMP. Right, naturally. So Already over 90% now for charge. Yeah, you just you wanted that to come in sooner, one fight sooner. Uh, now Chengdu Hunter is going to be in a real bind. Among trying to come in with a wrecking oh. ball. He just hacked in midair and leveled. A oh, hack before he could slam, so he kind of floats his way down into oblivion there. Overtime for the charge already. And the Hunter's scrambling here to try to do anything. Shu has his Coalescence up and running. Now it's going to come in from the Hunter's side. Kyo did build his up. No kills for Hot, but self-destruct that time around. But his team is picking up the slack. As they're pushing the Hunter's back, maybe with this grab, they can make something happen. But the sound barrier seems to prevent it all damage. And that's going to be charged, I think, finishing off this fight. Another EMP for good measure from Eileen. And that should be the end of point A. It will be. Charge, winning it, 100% to 45. Not a bad start for Kwangjo. <laughs> oh, man, that start to the fight, not much you could do. Among had to make it back to the point, but after that hack, he sort of floats down like a three-day-old yep. balloon onto the point, slowly <laughs> deflating. Pretty much as uh, deflating as was his team's chances of winning that round. Well, Kwangjo, I think, coming out with the right composition. You know that they're probably going to play Farah with Wrecking Ball here, just based on the roster that they fielded with Among and Jinmu. So they've been red, and we talked about this before, but Chengdu only wins 44% of their team fights when playing Farah comps into Winston 3-3. But that's not what's going to happen here, Guangzhou. They want to come out with a Farah of their own, and we are going to see mirror compositions. I was going to say, but not in the way we're used to seeing here in <laughs> No, not at the all. Overwatch League. <laughs> all right, I like these Chinese scenes, man. This is good stuff. We go. Rio, repositioning a little bit there. All right, taking some rockets here. Hot loading on the damage as usual. Jinmu matching him in terms of ult percentage here. Oh, Young Shalong gets caught by Hotpa though. Good start for the charge. Rio, a little bit isolated, can't be kept up. Jinmu though does die. Happy finds a good angle. And Charge still getting the crucial kills they need to get the control percent first. Yeah, crucially also able to resurrect Rio at the end of that engagement. You know, these teams all, like, in their first meeting, this was both teams' first game in the Overwatch League was playing each other. A match that the Chengdu Hunters won. But it was a little weird, and this was already oh, a little <laughs> weird as well. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a dangerous time for Faraz when you've got Soldier 76 on both sides as well. I'm feeling that one now. Happy, looking for some kills on Jinmu. Has to back away. Among though down. Eileen managed to finish him off somehow. Meltel's there for the res, but Hunter's still slow in really putting on the pressure to try to take this point. Yeah. One goes deep onto the back lines there. Happy pays the price. Jinmu with a kill there. All right, Hunters have a chance here. Happy gets res. Amon with the kill on Eileen. There we go. Right and before now, EMP for Eileen too. That's big. Yeah, that does hurt quite a bit. Looks like Charge is going to be able to hold it for now. Hotba, of course, going to be the one receiving the nano boost, as is typical on the Guangzhou Charge, whether he's on far or Tracer. She's on that Ana, and usually if Hotba's playing DPS, he'll be the target for the damage boost. Yep. You've got that great uh, combination with the jump pad on this map, and Soldier 76 is ultimate, too, that you can get boosted really high and kind of tack visor everybody from a pretty insane angle. Elsa, though, for that EMP. Hands yeah, no. right behind him. There we go. Chara down already. Kung Jo Long finds one at the attack visor. Comes down. Like I said, coming from on high, you got a good angle on everything. And that sets up a nice team fight for the Hunters. Just a bit of cleanup here. And they should flip the point. They do. Finally getting some control percent. Great setup from the Chengdu Hunters with the EMP coming in at the same time as the attack visor. And of course, taking out the Mercy for such an important Elimination to prevent resurrections and cut off that line of healing. Right. Eileen holding on to this EMP throughout that engagement, though. Waiting for just the right time here. And now he seems to have found it. Four people get EMP, but he dies immediately. Happy trying to ca uh, combo this with attack by the server. Why not? Hey, man, jump pads are fun. Young Jolong down early on. Chengdu Hunter is still not giving over the point quite yet, though. 
but Charge have a good angle on it. They've got the numbers. <laughs> Hakva, tactically crouching on a Farah. A rare sight, for sure. <laughs> Why not? Hey, I mean, you did all the work. <laughs> you have to tactical crouch. You never know when someone's going to solve the Widowmaker. Support. No, Barrage! Ooh, 3K Barrage for Hakva! I like it. And right away, Chara gets the res. Feels good. That's a lot of percentage for Guangzhou. They're getting very close to 2 0 this map. I loved everything Hoppa did right there. Absolutely everything. <laughs> that guy had style. We always know that guy had style. Shoot. Oops. Oh, watch out for the rockets. Yeah, out of the grenade on himself. That one hurts a little bit. Guangzhou Long down early on, so it is 6v5 in favor of the charge. Guangzhou Long gets res, though. Beltal there. Make a difference. Shinmu down though. Hotba gets a crucial Farah v Farah. And as good as Shinmu as far as Ben, for this map at least, Ryo's still alive Hotba. somehow as well. I don't know how you do that, man. Dong Zhou Long, another tag visor. More beautiful tracking. <laughs> and Ryo down early on. It's rezzed, of course. Char right there. But it's looking good for, for uh, Charge right now. New Fist, not going to be enough for Jinmu. And that should be near the end of the map. Cleanup is all that there is remaining. Amon can't stay on the point. That's going to be a 2-0 on Oasis for the charge. Great start for them in this series. Yeah, they look really prepared for Chengdu, really they prepared do. for the Farah compositions, and even playing into the mirror yeah. on that last point was great for the Guangzhou charge. I mean, like I said, you don't often see Jinmu get out Farah, but you did on that map. Qu quick break, and when we come back, map number two. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Guys, welcome back. It's Emily here. Now we know the Chengdu hunters are master chefs, and we also know that they're known for their unorthodox playstyle. But after watching their team day video, we can now add Kung Fu warriors to their resume. To prepare for their team day video, they actually train under a professional martial artist. Now, what are some of your guys' favorite moves from the video? Tweet at us using hashtag OWL2019 to join the conversation. All right, back to you guys, Monty and Doa. Well, thank you, <laughs> Emily. That was that was truly something. I out. love it. Uh, that was incredible. I, I loved every part of that video too. <laughs> me, me too. I could watch. I could watch hours of that. Honestly, <laughs> that was that was great. Let's just start every series of them with that video. You, you know what? I, I find all of this very entertaining. I find this series entertaining. It's I really. E I love esports. I love everything about <laughs> esports. Me Especially too. the Chengdu Hunters. That's and right. them coming in here, continuing to run their compositions. And Guangzhou trying to match them as well. Hoppa having that swag move on Farah. 
It no really tactical was. crouching, straight, straight into a barrage 3K, dying, and then getting res. That's a that's an alpha dominance <laughs> move. That's what you call that, man. That's how you <laughs> assert your dominance over the map right there. Like, yeah, 3K, your team will res me. It's all good. I like how the fight tactical was, he was tactical that. crouching while the fight was still going on that he could yeah. have been participating in. That's the best in. time and to tactical then crouch. he went and got a 3K. J yeah. Just like... Mint play, mint so play. Do. Then you hit F9 and you sit back in your chair and just like cross your arms. Like, <laughs> my job is done today. <laughs> F9, highlight it. <laughs> well, we're going to Volskaya Industries, another map that's back again for stage three. Our assault map here. Charge 1 0 in the series so far with a win on Oasis. Both teams, and one and two overall on this map. Uh, taking a look at Guangzhou Charge. They are going to be running another unorthodox defense here with Hotfa back on the Tracer. He's a very versatile player. They have used that to a certain level of effect. But Charge, you know, looking pretty strong, actually. Stronger than we've seen them in a while. Yeah, and look at this defense, too. Widowmaker, Tracer, and the uh, Sombra. They're going triple DPS again. Interesting. Meanwhile, on the Hunter's side, looks like we might see something more far bit wacky as well. Yeah, Jinmu on the far yet again. Ryo hiding behind the box. <laughs> Barely fits. <laughs> right. The ball behind the box strategy, right. of course. Happy, he is a renowned Widowmaker player. Sure is. Big, big deal when this guy has been able to play this hero this season. And what better time than now? Yang Chao Long also going to be on that Widowmaker. I like it. And meanwhile, this summer is causing a lot of problems behind enemy, enemy lines. Among was actually hacked right there, coming in on the Reinhardt. Yeah, hard to move through when you can't put up your shield, so they do have to wait. That buys a bit more time for the charge. This is a very weird composition. It is... I like it. I'm all for weird at this point. It's Goats with a Widow instead of a Zarya, which is a very bold move. Call it Widow. The question is, are you going to have enough damage? Widows, I guess. I don't know. All right, Young Jalong. For a shot on the tracer, it's hard to find though. Chucky Ch Hunters moving on to the point at the moment. Charge needs to engage. He can get somebody on there. Hotpo waiting to try to build up that pulse bomb. Ooh, low health. Young Joe Long taking out Eileen with the kill early on to finish off the Widowmaker. And Hunter's attack suddenly looking a little bit less secure. That said, they do already have a tick. It's a good start. Hotpo gets the stick. Oh, but he doesn't get the kill. Jinmu gets one instead. Yvalto getting aggressive now on to Shu. But yeah, man, that's a tough fight. Unless you come in and get the environmental kill. Yvalto! That's right. That's what you do. Happy gets him with the Venom Pine in the end anyway. What am I watching, Doa? What you am I watching? Just long enough. You are watching peak Overwatch, my friend. That's what you're watching right now. It's going to be the reset from charge as they have to give up point A. Hunters take it 6.15 in the time bank for them. Let's talk about how that should never have worked for the Chengdu Hunters, but somehow did, <laughs> Noah. So the problem with running this composition is that the Widow is trying to deal with two flankers, the Tracer and the Sombra simultaneously. Sure. So there really should never be an opportunity for Widow to output damage. Well, because I mean, she has to be worried. Too. Yeah, and, and the Widow did die early. Eileen yeah. saved the EMP here for the second point. It's going to need to make it count. They need some sort of defensive stability here against the Hunters, who are coming in with only the Transcendence, but a few more ultimates on the way. Might see him poke a little bit. How aggressive is Eileen going to be with this EMP? I mean, you got to wait for them to commit, right? You'll be happy playing this poke game for as long as they want to. Sure. There you go. EMP time, and Kyo, the easy victim there. That's what happens, man. Here's Zenyatta, you get caught by that. Unless you have a right click loaded up, there's nothing you can do. Charge with an easy team fight win. But the Hunters didn't have to use any else, so you're okay. I mean... Oh. <laughs> oh, no! Well. Wow. Tactical crouching while alive. <laughs> That's how you do it, yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right, well, Guangzhou, you know, they held on to both of their support ultimates, so they'll be ready for this next push. They've chosen to stay on the Ana because that nano boost has been... Oh, all right. Yeah, that's the time to nano you, Brigida. <laughs> she, I was wondering why Brigida yeah, was going, who's ready to take some punishment? They realize they just need to swap off, so yeah. might not use it right there. Well, I think they... Well, supposed to have to swap now, yeah. All right. They do swap. Happy dies anyway. Could have used that nano boost there. <laughs> Young Zhao Long coming in, getting the kill with the Zarya. Starting to gain a little bit of damage on that one. Kill with the Transcendence early. Ooh, the Shatter does not really connect with too many people. No kills. Hotba, though, down as the reverse. Shatter comes in from Among. 
And Hunter's looking pretty good on this attack so far. Yeah, that's it, man. They take two points in style. Well, that was a really interesting Volskaya round. I uh, haven't was... seen anything quite like that in some time. It was a bit wacky. <laughs> it it certainly bit, was. A bit weird and wacky, that's for sure. But I'm all for it, man. When we come back, Charge goes on the attack. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Well, we've swapped sides. Charge will go on the attack now, but it was Among and the Chengdu Hunters taking two points really fast, actually, on uh, their attack. That was a that was a crazy round, wasn't it? <laughs> it certainly was. I like it. I can't say I've seen Widowmaker goats before, but now I can. Now you have. Thank you, Chengdu Hunters. Chengdu Hunters has a, a knack for showing us things in Overwatch that we've never seen before. All right. Well, they're going to do a double sniper defense now. I'll take it. On Volskai. I'll definitely take it. I love watching Jinmu on basically anything, but definitely on the Hanzo if I can't watch him on the Farah. I would love for Ryo to just stand that Genji, but it's not going to happen. He'd be like a, a real uh, alpha bumper play to, to do the DPS as the main tank role. That's what you do now. Six, six DPS, why not? Yeah. No, Guangzhou, they'll be going back. They still want to play a flanking composition. How does he jump? How does that work? How can he jump? What the, how can he jump? <laughs> <laughs> what are the physics involved there? Zenyatta and Wrecking Ball in ball form. How do they jump? I don't know. Explain it to me, Michael Chu. Tell me the science. Well, this is going to be interesting because the composition that Guangzhou is running is pretty good against Chengdu. They've got two flankers in Hotva and Eileen to pressure the snipers, and Happy, Happy can go into a Widow duel as well versus Yang Xiaolong. So it's all about getting set up. But you need to get your flankers in place. Now, they're creating a pincer attack. Eileen's on one side. Hotpa is currently on the opposite side of the point. It's going to be a slow rollout. Oh. Uh, Young Jolong winning the first uh, Widow duel there. Damage on the Happy. Now he's getting distracted. Widow shot's coming in. Young Jolong trying to fight off uh, Rio as well. Has to be careful there. Wow, Amon. Oh, happy down. That was such a good play from Amon. Yeah. He goes back and completely zones out the Widow and he actually kills the Widow right before she lands in spawn with the grapple. I mean, that's one thing that you're going to see uh, Amung be able to do that Rio might not be able to equalize. Amung is a great Wrecking Ball duelist. He's going to go get those Ooh. kills. Don't long, though. Getting one on the Eileen there. That's a huge stagger. Eileen was yep. standing behind the boxes on the back of the point, and they have just gone back to taxi Happy back into position, oh. and Yang Zhaolong! going to take him out on the grapple, and Guangzhou is just trickling into this point right now. They've lost like 30 seconds because of those two eliminations. I haven't seen a Widow display like that since Jesha versus Brent. <laughs> that was some good stuff. <laughs> Jolong looking for another shot here. Close range this time against Eileen. Forced to translocate. I call that a win. Then a mine in place. All right, now the Widowmaker ult active for Young Long. So, Chengdu Hunter is getting those wall hacks, getting to see where the enemy team is for a little while. I mean, Happy's 
really struggling on this Widowmaker now. I know I talked him up starting in, but they've got so much vision. Just the Imprecite straight into the Sonic Arrow. Yeah. So they can't move. Finally, they're able well, remember to Tuesday, maybe move out of this position without being seen. They increased the radius on uh, Sonic Arrow a while ago. Nice Venom so, mine. Uh, yeah. Ooh, nice kill by Happy as well. And now Charge comes in, and that might be a full team reset pretty soon here. Rio down. But aside from that, Charge getting all the kills. Can they finish it without the tank? There's the, ooh, the stick! He's gonna go do it, doesn't get the kill, but he's low enough. Everyone getting slept, getting taken out. And that's gonna be Charge. Finally getting a lot of progress on A, and a little bit of tactical crouching at the end of the <laughs> there's been There's been a lot of tactical crouching in this game so far, though. <laughs> I like it. I like it, just the way I like my Overwatch. That's right, tactically crouched. He's switching over to the Moira now, so. Anticipating that Guangzhou's gonna stay on the multi DPS comp, but it's not gonna happen. Take a look at Happy here and his Widowmaker after we talked him up. There's nice, a nice shot nice. to start it off. And All right. Pretty good stuff. Yep. No mercy for the enemy team, <laughs> literally. Not Lit go along, building up the EMP in the back lines, meanwhile. Yeah, just switched over to the Sombra, though, so Eileen gonna come in with the EMP right now. Come on. Going for the strike there. Has to settle for the spare, is he? Backs out around the corner. Charge walking in now. Eileen with the EMP ready to go. Amok in the back line. He's kind of vulnerable to that Sombra right now. Oh, he's kind of vulnerable because he has no health left. Has to get away. There's the hack. He's trying he's to grab the He's victory. got the Vega. He got the health pack, though. Still in trouble, and he goes down. Eileen winning that 1v1. Meanwhile, Elsa got hit with the bio grenade. Popped on the mech in a hurry here. Rio caught, though, by the self-destruct. New Hunters. Trying to defend, but they're gonna have to do it through this EMP from Eileen. Nano boost on a Hoppa as well, dealing so much damage on the Zarya. Yeah, that should be about it for this uh, this push here. Charge, looking like they might be able to take point B real fast. And there goes Veltal. They've nearly got it. Two ticks taken already. Chengdu waiting to come back in with Jinmu. Not quite zoned out there. Kyo can stay elusive for the moment. Now they've got Elsa, but again, just kind of streaming in here. It's gonna buy time, but the grab is gonna seal the deal. Charge with a great attack. At both teams, plenty of time in the time bank. Yeah. As we go to that phase, each team with another opportunity here to go on the attack. It has been a weird and wild one so far. It's been great, an awesome match. Tell your friends when we come back, gonna be time bank. Here we go. 346 in the time bank for the charge. They'll be attacking first because the Chengdu Hunters got away with 411 in their time bank after their successful attack. Both teams with a good amount of time here to push. We might see this actually go uh, pretty high points wise, I think. <laughs> we definitely could. If it keeps going the way it has been. Yeah, both teams using approximately half the total time that they have yep. in this map. And because it's assault, they'll also get another 30 seconds if they do cap A. Right. Triple DPS for charge on the attack. Looks like they're gonna put Hoppa back onto the tracer here. They're gonna try this again. Oh, charge. Ooh, oh, that is very nice way to start the map. It also forces oh. the D.Va up into position. So Elsa had to move forward. I mean, Rio just had an easy slam into a kill on Jinmu. They were able to set him up like a clay pigeon. I mean, that just that just ruined the entire defense from the Chengdu Hunters. They didn't want to have to use their D.Va jets and defensive matrix in order to cover Jinmu while he was asleep, but that's what ended up happening. And then they had to retreat before that booster came back on. So Guangzhou makes the right choice just to play very aggressively with their better mobility, charge that front line, and now they're going to cap real fast. Neat stat for uh, Eileen, too. Nearly half of his EMPs, or half of his uh, hacks, rather, leading the kills in this map so far. Yeah, he's been solid, for yeah. sure, Very on good. the side of the charge. 3.23 on the clock for the charge as they approach point B here in time bank. And this is the this is the part where it can really snowball. Chengdu need a miracle. They need a pick before Eileen gets this EMP, because Chengdu just had to swap their, basically their whole composition. That's yeah, going to be rough. EMP coming in really soon, 98% for Eileen. 
99, he's got it now. Can they turn it into a point take, though? Anyone can do it again. There's a sleep dart on Elsa. Oh, that's big for Shu. Another big sleep dart. Diva out of commission for a little while. Waiting now for the EMP to come in. Happy needs a bit of healing. Shu happy to comply. Hotpa getting a little bit low as well. Eileen, EMP on four people there. Q and Jinmu spared from. They were out of the way. Where are the kills though? There it is. Jinmu taken down by Hotpa. And Hotpa with that nano boost is doing a ton of damage to Amon. Oh, back, back away. Look at that. Single handedly roasting the tank line. Oh, he's doing so much damage right now. Sure is. Charge comes through, but right into the other charging Reinhardt. And even though the sleep dart hits hot butt, it's looking really good for Guangzhou right now. Two ticks taken already, and it's the same situation. One person coming in at a time to try to buy time, but nobody can get there and charge with a great time bank attack. The combination of the EMP and the biotic grenade onto the Chengdu Hunters was just too much to handle. Irresistible push yeah. from the Guangzhou charge, and they snowball that directly from A to B. That is exactly how you want to do it. Yeah, it's fantastic. You had the nano boost for the Azari at the same time, too. Azari that's also charged up at that moment. So just a ton of damage. And Shu's sleep darts hitting two really crucial ones, one onto the Hanzo at the beginning of it, and then one onto uh, the Diva at the end on point B. So again, you know, that Hanzo kill early got the Hunters out of position. Easy point A take. The uh, sleep dart on the Diva on point B removed any, uh, any way of like the biotic grenade coming in. Yep. Yeah, very nice stuff. So yeah. Guangzhou bouncing back, even though they had that smaller time bank and in a minute and 36 seconds, they go ahead and take both points in this map. I guess two minutes and six seconds because they did get that 30 second boost. Sure. Starting at 346, Chengdu though, 411. So a little more start time. Can they be as efficient as we just saw the charge? They're going to need to try to take it fast. They want to try to keep up. Because, man, four points of two minutes remaining. That's really nice. Here we go. Charge on the attack in there. Going back to the basics. Back to 3-3 now with the Reinhardt. Sniper goats again. Yep. I still don't like this because <laughs> there should be too much pressure on Yang Zhao Long realistically. Now we will see. Yveltal taking a little bit of damage early on as he tries to escort his team towards the point. The central problem is that with three backline dive, how do you even find shots on the Widowmaker? Oh, especially. I guess you, okay. Oh, well, like never mind. Just get headshot, whatever. <laughs> That's what you get for trying to analyze this, Monty. <laughs> Happy's just going to get the headshots. Everybody's trapped in that little room. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Or shooting. Hand doesn't in No, that's, that's really dark. We don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no, no. Don't say that. Fish in a barrel. We'll stick with that analogy. All right. Wow. I need healing. Happy needs some healing, and you know what? I'd be happy to give it to him because he deserved it. He got a lot done in that fight. So it looks like what they want to do is go into the bunker and hide behind the Rhine shield and wait for Yang Zhao Long just to kill somebody. But that that puts so much pressure on Yang Zhao Long to hit shots. You're right, though. It shouldn't work, too, because if you can kind of bunker up in that room, theoretically, you're not going to be giving the Widowmaker or the Tracer, like, any shots. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, there's just so much pressure on the Widow. Uh, hot bow, ooh, nearly avoiding the headshot there. But now with the kills on the ammo and the Kyo, he's gonna be able to save that pulse bomb. Nice exit kills here. Like you uh, don't have don't, Daria Pulse oh, as a result. <laughs> hot bow's in rare form uh, today. I like it. Hi. <laughs> and the hunters. Hi. See, I feel like they're betraying their own uh, personalities here. They're playing 3-3. <laughs> three, three. That's not you, hunters. That's not you. Beacon in place. That's nice. I'm glad the beacon is placed. It's good to hear. And for side up now, can use it. All right. So stall out their approach. Charged with a good amount of ultimates here, too. They're going to have the, the EMP in just a moment, too. All right, hot buzz. So waiting for a place to put that pulse up. I leave down. Ooh, did not get the EMP. Oh, that is really bad for the charge. They're going to try and nano boost in, though. There's a nano boost right now onto Rio, and he just takes out Yang Zhao Long, who's alone on the high ground. It's going to need to be an incredible pulse bomb. That's what it's going to need to be here. This is going to be the sound barrier coming down, waiting that one out again. Charge biding their time. All right, Rio going really high before he brings the minefield down to his team, tries to get through, gets stunned by the shield bash, and taken out. And Hotba, I don't know. Just couldn't find the opportunity he wanted. He's down too, so just 
kind of weird in that nobody really got to use their ultimates in that fight. No, they didn't, but at least they held on to the EMP, Doa. Yeah. So they need to do hot buzz. Smart, I think, to switch off the Zarya, off to Zarya, even though he does have the pulse bomb. You can cycle EMP against the rest of your ults right now. Shu will not be remaining on the Ana like he did on their last B defense. Swaps earlier to the Zenyatta. Chengdu, though, still good opportunities here. Kyo, they need to hit him with this EMP. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is... He's on the left side of the screen right now. Also gets the unbeat individually first. I'm out of here. All right, here we go. Hotbo walking forward now. A lot of damage on the Chengdu. Aimung down. They couldn't keep the tank alive. And Charge gonna buy even more time on the time bank of the Hunters. I mean, this is great for Charge. They swapped yeah. off their comp, and they didn't have to use the EMP. It does not get better than that on yep. a defense. You get another freebie coming in with your EMP. I mean, the best part is that even if the Hunters do take point B at this point, you're going to have a pretty substantial time bank lead if you're the Guangzhou charge. Yeah, you certainly will. This is a win I lead lurking. Now. How aggressively are they? Oh, they're playing it they're super doing, aggressively. They're doing it. Nobody would have expected the EMP to be there. Full team EMP from Eileen. Really Easy good timing. Easy win, yeah. That, that speed boost on the Lucio bringing everyone around. They were hiding behind that wall, so a surprise attack from the Guangzhou charge. And now they're, they've got their two, two support ultimates. They nearly have their Graviton Surge. And Theo! Eileen's still harassing. Ooh, that was close too. Any picks right now are disaster for the Hunters. Yeah, Yangshou Long down on the grab count too, so it's not looking good for Chengdu. And this is their final push. Well, Hoppa should have his grab soon. What that fight did was give everybody the ultimates they needed on the charge side of things. Amok just walking forward, needs a great shatter here. Elsa hacked at the moment, shatter comes in, gets Hotba, who think kill Hotba before he gets his ult. They can't quite get it done though. Hotba drops, Chengdu Hunters though getting the kills, and they've actually opened up themselves a chance to do this. That shatter actually might have done the trick. The question though, Doe is respawns with the EMP. Guangzhou still has a chance. There it is, the EMP. Put the grab right there for the Hunters, and it doesn't matter. You only need your left clicks when you've got that grab and everybody in it. And now the respawns don't look like they're going to be enough for the charge. It is overtime, but it looks like the Hunters will keep themselves alive in this map. Will the Wrecking Ball get there? No! Bounces harmlessly up the wall. It was close. Wow. Wow, so we are going to go into another round here. Action-packed assault, tons of DPS. I like it. Charge with the edge of the time bank. We'll see if they can close it out when we come back. Our second round of time bank. You still can't pilot that giant robot, but I'm holding out hope. Maybe someday. <laughs> 210 in the clock, or on the clock rather, for Guangzhou charge. No time for the hunters. That means all the charge need to do is just take the first tick on point A to close out this map. Yeah, best the Chengdu hunters can hope for is a draw right now. Yep. Having capped in overtime, but at least they got this far. Guangzhou says, nah, we won't. Switch anything up. Chengdu, they agree. Double sniper defense back for them. I like it. This is who you are, Hunters. <laughs> They've Don't embraced afraid, it. But Don't be afraid to be yourself. That's right. You should play the DPS. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Charge on the attack. We'll see if Yang Zhao Long or Jinmu can find any early picks. They need to buy some time here. 145 on the clock for the charge right now. Charge just kind of approaching this slowly, looking for picks, I guess. Eileen, ooh, nearly dodging Kyo there. All right, they're coming in now. You belt off. A little bit of trouble here, but it's going to be Jinmu that gets the kill on the Hotba. Ooh, Storm headshot Arrow there. headshot. Yep. For Jinmu catching out Hotba. He may be fast on that tracer, but Jinmu has some of the best accuracy of any player here in the Overwatch League. That's right. When you can spam those arrows, your accuracy uh, 
helps even more. <laughs> you don't need to be as accurate. If all taught down though, happy with the big pit onto the mercy. That's gonna be huge. Yeah, they six versus five now. Oh, Tara down, but Hoppa comes right back again. It's a brawl, one for one, pretty much back and forth across the teams. Chunky Hunter is reaching some ultimates very soon here. They've still got the tanks on the point though. That's a crucial thing. Charge can't really approach until they deal with those. Now they can't do it. And Happy, Biotic Grenaded right now, getting surrounded, trying just to get out of this situation on the Widowmaker. Amok's coming for him, though. Yeah, I couldn't finish off the kill, though. Had to get back to his team. He was getting a little bit low health. That shield on cooldown now. Comes in, drops a minefield. Good angle on that one. Happy just taken out. There was nowhere for him to go. Might not have had his grapple up. Hard to say. Kyo, ooh, taken out by Hoppa in the back lines. Meanwhile, Veltel, environmental kill on Eileen, it looked like somehow. But that's all you need. Just get out right yeah. now if you're the Guangzhou charge. Spawn proximity is in your favor. Kyo is going to take some time to get back. You will have six players on the point faster. You have the EMP. Guangzhou with a major advantage. Somebody's got to get there, though. Happy running for it. There's Rio on the point right now, saving the minefield for this. And now Eileen with the EMP ready to go as the Hunters approach. Only one tick needed. Oh, and they get Young Zhao Long. He's out. There goes Jinmu. So in the last moment, Charge biding their time. And they play it out perfectly. That is going to be a map win and a 2-0 lead for the Charge going into the half. Really nice execution there. They have just enough time to get the EMP and their other ults online. Didn't panic, set it up after that a limb onto Keo and close it out. Yeah, really cleanly done by the charge in the end of 5-4 victory on Volskaya. Awesome match, we'll see what the analysts have to say about it at halftime right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right. Somebody give me a fight to Guangzhou. Looks like they're having a party out there. Welcome back oh, to the Blizz Arena. We also have awesome people. That's when you make noise, guys. <laughs> yes. Great people all up in this building as well, including the two gentlemen we have here. We have Bren, we have Sideshow. And this was a match we were so pumped about coming into the day. Guangzhou versus Chengdu. We expected to see some new faces. Haven't seen them yet, but we did see a lot of fun gameplay, guys. Yes, yeah. I mean, again, I like to throw this word out a lot, or two words. 
clown fiesta. I feel like <laughs> sums up this match in some ways. It's been well, great. It has been fantastic. So much fun. I love it. This this sort of messy style, this chaotic Overwatch, is really when you you get the most entertainment out of it as well. You see the different heroes. I mean, it, again, you can tell why both of these teams are fan favorites at this point because they don't like to play the triple tank, triple, uh, triple support. They're kind of flexing on roles that they're they're very comfortable on. We get to see Eileen playing his signature Sombra. We get to see Happy playing a lot of these hit scan heroes. It's just fantastic all around. And Oasis is really uh, the pinnacle of where you see that happen because DPS comes kind of rain king. Charge yep. comes out on top of that first map. Josh's Volskaya though was much closer. It was. It was back and forth between these two teams, and neither team could really put up a defense. Uh, that tends to happen though in this meta when uh, there's a lot of DPS heroes being played by both of these teams, but also the Sombra coming out of Eileen. Really yeah, just cracked up with the points over and over again. And both teams are making small adaptations, but nothing big enough to really shut the other team out. Bren, who's been the most impressive player in the first half? I know we've only seen two games. In the first half pocket, I would have to go with Eileen again for the Sombra, honestly. I mean, again, this this hero has... You can get so much done with, honestly, quite little skill on, on Sombra as a hero. It, it's, That's it's, how you're grinding your way to It's how I'm grinding my way up. I feel like it's a hero where you can literally just absolutely dominate on. The EMP is one of the most powerful abilities yep. in the game. Like, Eileen, when you have a player as good as that, when he can aim very well, when he can track very well, it, again, he has an incredible amount of impact on that one hero alone. But the fact that his charge rate on his EMPs is nutty, and the fact that he's hitting multiple enemies with them and cracking open a lot of these defenses, I mean, it says it all. You saw it on Oasis. He dropped the EMP before the point unlock. Josh, let's walk through one specific play, though, because a lot of times when you're playing your ranked games, you may run into a double sniper defense, and our teams today showed you how to break that. Yes, it was the Guangzhou charge that showed how to break it. So I'm going to do an insights power by Intel to run you through what happened in that game. So Bren, get get out of my yeah, way. Right, I'm even. Get I'm, out I'm of my even. way. I'm moving. All right, so let's set up this situation. So you have this double sniper. So you've got Jinmu and you've got uh, Yang Shou Long, who are going to be putting a lot of pressure on here. They've also got the Sonic Arrow, so they know where they're going. If the entirety of charge try to push around the side to take control of this high ground that isn't being defended, they're just going to get picked off. So instead, they have to put a lot of pressure at the back and force these players away and make space for Happy while simultaneously using the Sombra to pressure Jinmu. And Jinmu's occupying this hut and is going to do a ton of work. So here I'm going to pause it again and show you what's happened when they've actually engaged. The Nano Boost has been used at the back onto Rio, and he has just sacrificed his life here. At the same time, Jinmu's getting pressured down, and Happy now has all of this space to be able to work. Let's watch it from Happy's POV. He ducks the arrow from Jinmu, then takes him down with the help of the Sombra, hits a nasty oh, shot in the oh. mouthful. And when you have a player like Happy, all you need to do is give him space. There you go, Ooh. insights powered by Intel. So all I need is a sniper who can hit headshots within like three frames. It's yeah, me. yeah. It's and me. then, you, just, oh, and yeah. then you, you have to me. sacrifice yourself before. for him. That's the lesson though in ranked. If you're playing tank, don't try and carry everything on your own. You know, you need to Let make me space for people. There you yeah, go. The Work carry. as a team in your ranked games. It's a, it's a weird concept. All right, well, the highlight of this match for me has definitely been the gameplay. But for Bren, he hasn't stopped talking about this star. Yes, yeah. It's been great. The, the intro. Look at this. How, how do they okay. do this? It was so good. I don't but know what this is. All I know is I want to try and imitate it. I want to try and mimic it any way we can. So, Puckett, you're at the back with me. Okay. Josh, Where am I? I don't know. Can I we bring in some friends here for some support? Some we got Danny, we got Mika, we got Zoe right. here. Thank you very yes. much. All right, what do we do with our microphone? I don't know. I'm going to put mine <laughs> in my top like this. All right. All right. Puckett. Where? Oh, it's Oh, yeah. that, that's my yeah. hand, Danny. Wait, yep. no, hold on. Oh, whoa, sorry, whoa. So you're, 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 you're back here. Danny, come on, guys, come on. We're running out of time. I don't know. I don't know. Here put, we your, go. put your arm up. Yeah. I yeah. think this is it. This is yeah. our terrible version of a we star. Uh, shout out to the teams doing it the right way as we <laughs> fail. Thank you for watching. We'll be back with game three after this. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan. Every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
See, we had it easy. All we ever had to do was the fusion dance thing. You know, we never had to try that like star thing. But. Uh, by the way, that star thing only works if you're standing on a ramp at that <laughs> angle. So yeah. I, don't, I don't even know what well, they were trying to do. I mean, if the people in the front like like crouch kind that's of. That's true. That yeah. would have worked that but way. If everyone's standing, it that's, doesn't, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. Unless you're trying to make like a horizontal <laughs> star instead of like a vertical one. But we, we should have you know, done that. That's right. We instead. should have coached that next time. Next time. <laughs> well, guys, the Charge have a 2-0 lead over the Chengdu Hunters, and it's been a really, really fun match. We've seen a lot of really wacky stuff we don't usually see in the current meta, and, and I am so I am so refreshed and renewed as a caster by it. I, I mean, I love the fact that we were seeing Guangzhou come in and try and match some of the compositions in terms of going DPS for DPS. Yeah. But honestly, like, the comps they're using against Chengdu are counter comps a lot of the times in these matches. I like the fact that they're running with the Wrecking Ball, the, the Sombra and the Tracer up against the double sniper defense. There's so much harassment in the back line. If you could set up, Sideshow did a really good job of showing how you can pressure that back line to create more room for your Widowmaker. And that gave Happy the chance to pop off. So. Yeah. I mean, Charge is a team that's really well equipped to play in a more DPS heavy sort of compositional style. We've seen Hotbot on that Tracer actually yeah. quite a bit this uh, season. And we know they like to Nana boost it. We've seen obviously Happy on the Widowmaker plenty of times before this too. So it's a good time to bring it all out, especially in a crucial match like this where they really do need the win. Yeah, absolutely. And I do wonder if we're gonna see some subs and indeed- We are, here it will. comes. It's gonna be Nero coming in for the first time in the Overwatch League. It's his Overwatch League debut, and we've heard good things about this guy. He's a notable DPS. And he did, in fact, turn 18 on May 31st, so wow. just a week ago now, but he's been with the team the entire time. And I've had the chance to talk to their assistant coach, Cuddles, who thinks that he really gives um, some more versatility for experimental comps, and they also really like how vocal he is in the game. So be able to see him on this debut. Rio going to be swapping off to the Arisa here. Shu onto the Hog, Nero. Oh, interesting. They're going to actually go Roadhog and then Hanzo as well with this. Well, they're, so trying, they're trying to, to break for, the bunker. Right, going for picks with the uh, Arisa Roadhog. And if you're unfamiliar with this, the Arisa uses a halt to pull people out from behind the shield, and then Roadhog hooks. Them. And then, ideally, they die. So happy on the McCree to zone that far out of the sky. Yep. Having a lot of success so far. Good concussive blast there. Rio gets low, but still has the healing. So Coming in for the Mercy, but Ugh. can't get out in time. That barrier comes down just a millisecond too late. And that's the thing. I mean, unless uh, unless Happy is putting a lot of pressure on the Jinmu here, there's going to be so much damage from those rockets. And, you know, you combine that with uh, Junkrat as well. There goes Elsa now. Maybe charged with an opportunity now that they've got the 6v5. I mean, Elsa got hooked in. That's really bad. He's not in a resable position either. That was just a pretty greedy move there from Elsa. Now we're gonna see Happy back on the Widowmaker. They're trying to deal with Jinmu, but it's taking all of their resources. And that means Rio just goes down to the Junkrat spam in the front. Oh, the Reds comes in though. Char bringing him back. Jinmu has the barrage loaded up though. Here comes the tire, Young Chao Long. Trying to get a couple picks. On this Junkrat just settles for Shu, and why not? He Veltal down though, Happy gets a big pick onto the Mercy, so no more reses for the defense. This is gonna be a chance for Charge to come back fast. Yes, it will. Uh, should, they should have this one right now. Yep. Ara gonna down. be a sitting duck in mid-air without the healing. The Ana's been zoned out. Yep. Yang Zhao Long taken out. It was only a matter of time after the Mercy fell. And now, about 4.30 on the clock as Charge starts the payload moving. 
Now Zhao Long gets res only to die immediately. <laughs> Why did you bring me back only to die? <laughs> also, to stagger your team. I know. <laughs> It's like Mercy's like, heroes never die. And then the boys trails <laughs> off as the person she reds gets hooked and flies away. <laughs> heroes never die three times, she was about to say. Yeah. Only twice. She didn't really, like, uh, go against the doctor's code there. She technically did no harm, but... I'm in. Hey, Mon. What, what is Chugdu doing? They're just, like... They're, they're basically straight feeding right now. <laughs> oh, with that res and Among just popping off the top. Yeah, well, I mean, he, I think he got hooked there too. But yeah. So I mean, not, it's getting in line of sight before you're set up, though. That is true. The, the staggers have really caused problems, and now there's Coming an in. infrasight. Nero low health right now, trying to stay alive. Among down anyway, though. Shu gets him with the whole hunt. Jinmu pops that barrage, but there aren't really a lot of targets around to use against it. Solo barrage onto the Widowmaker. I'm not sure if that's how you get the job done. Hotbow with the self-destruct. He finds Jinmu. He knew he was out of position. Couldn't get behind cover. Nero just basically uh, taking it easy, pouring arrows into a big meaty target. Got that Dragon Strike ready to go. Oh, can he win? Widow we can. Widowmaker. Or rather, uh, Farah. I mean, if you saw that play, Hotbow actually had a really good self-destruct because it zoned everybody off the cart. I mean, yeah. the payload was moving that entire time. And because we saw Chengdu come in so hard to the back line, they couldn't actually get back onto the payload. Jinmo would just take it out by the self-destruct. But just as a zoning tool, even if it got no eliminations, probably still would have secured this point. So after all that, 3-3 three, three from both teams now going to point C, about what you would expect on board of the Among now on the Reinhardt. <laughs> You really can't play anything but Ryan 3-3 in these narrow spaces. No. Like point C here on Eichenwald. Yeah, it's just, it's just too strong. I mean, just being able to put up that tank line in front, absorb all that damage, move forward with it. You can see Charge doing just that now, trying to jump onto Aimung. He's low. They got him. Shoot with the final blow. Now Jinmu just trying to get on the cards. And that's a reset for the Hunters. Looks like it's going to be a stagger onto Elsa, though. Don't think they're going to let Mini Diva die anytime soon. Nope, just going to stun her and block that in the back line. There we go. Elsa dips back, and now the response going to come in here pretty late. Looks like Elsa will be able to respawn right before they hit the end of C. I mean, Nero's nearly got the grab already after the swap, and that might be the ticket to uh, finishing up point C here. Nero getting low, though. They can't lose him. He's got the grab. He goes down right as he gets it. Throws the grab anyway, but the team not really oh. able to follow up. Jinmu lives just barely. A little bit of an aggressive trigger finger from Nero just wanted to grab believed that his team could win the fight afterwards, but it didn't work out. If they had been able to get the elimination on Jinmu, there was a possibility that they could have turned that. Possibly. And yes, the grab was used, but Guangzhou still has five ults right now. So they'll be coming in with plenty to deal with Yang Xiao Long's grab. Nero can probably build up one of his own in the next fight. I mean, Kyo's on Zen Yada. Zen does not take much damage to build the L2, so he might have it. There's a Transcendence being used to counter the grab now. Charge aggressive after that. Amon goes for the shatter. Doesn't really get anybody with it, though. Self-destruct comes in. It's going to be the sound barrier on the Hunters to protect them. Amon did get knocked down a bit there by Rio. There's a big shatter coming in. Jinmu gets charged. Rio with a big kill for the Guangzhou charge. And Elsa popped out of the mech. It's all Guangzhou right now as they finish up point C. Just a great sequence of ultimates that the Hunters just couldn't handle. That's it. That's the end of the round. And the charge set a pretty good time here on Eichenwald. Hey, they do, but Chengdu, they used the grab too early. They used all their support ults too early. So easy for the Guangzhou charge to sit back, get the later support ults, and just roll through the end of the map. And 157 on the clock. We'll see what the Hunters can do when their turn to attack comes up next. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Guangzhou Charge finished things up with 157 in the time bank. Pretty good attack run for them. Now it's time for the Hunters to try to equalize. Hotba, this time on the Widowmaker. He's not going to stay on the Widow. I would imagine, yeah. Happy on the Soldier 76. I have my eye on you. Hmm. Okay, well, you know, we like I said, I talked to one of the assistant coaches for the Guangzhou Where's Charge the Cuddles, and he said that one of the things they like there. is Nero's versatility. And considering that previously on this roster, Hoppa's been the Farah player, so now they have a way to play Farah and Sombra without Eileen in the lineup, which is pretty important for them. Hmm. All right. Here we go. The attack begins. From the Chengdu Hunters. Hey. Also just uh, taking a look at things. Looks like there's going to be some swaps here. What are they going to switch to? All right, Amung over on the uh, Reinhardt. Yangzhou Long on the McCree now. Okay, so it's going to be the 3-2-1. The <laughs> <three, two, one. laughs> they're doing the same thing that they did on the last map on Volskaya, but they're doing it with a McCree because the ranges are shorter yeah. rather uh -oh. than the Widowmaker. Evaltel gets pounded into the ground. Jin Moon, Yang Zhao Long soon to follow it. Easy defense early on for the charge. So the McCree is objectively better oh, against... Oh, what a... Oh, nice. oh, that was a great stagger at the end. The McCree is objectively better because at least you have the flashbang to deal with Hotpa on the Sombra if you have to. Right. And you don't necessarily need the longest range because any sight line here on Icon Balde is going to be close enough for McCree still to do a lot of damage. And you're looking pretty solid on the far so far. Concussion grenade. Ooh, that was, that was a dangerous moment, but luckily, you have to have the Diva matrix. There. Yeah, yeah that, that matrix isn't there. That, that Zen's going off the cliff. Ah, uh, Young Jong Long's not there anymore. He got a Helix rocket to the face, and now Nero can come in without that McCree around to get more aggressive. But no, it's going to be Elsa trying to get aggressive on the Diva instead. That just results in a long stagger in the favor of the charge. I mean, the problem, again, with this composition is how are you dealing damage? Because there's such long range poke from the soldier Fara combination. Are, are you really going to kill that Farah who has a pocket mercy with right. just the McCree? And the McCree also is trying to avoid Sombra and flashbang Sombra at the same time. Okay. Well, that happens sometimes. So, sometimes you don't get the Matrix down. Yep, defense Matrix. Must have been on cooldown, or you just didn't see it happen. Amon takes a dive off the edge. He's uh, he's in the Bastion cinematic now. <laughs> Communing with the trees, pretty much. All right, Kwangjo charge. A lot of ultimates used on this defense. They've got the hunters down to a minute 45 in the time bank here. Hotbo with a big EMP ready to go. Minefield gets dodged, but that just kind of funnels the hunters back towards their spawn again. They also use the rally, so... Yeah. That's gonna be coming down pretty quickly. Obviously saw some of that armor, but... Oh, oh that was oh, tricky. Beat. Yeah, comes up from the high, gets three. Didn't get quite as many. Translocate, gonna be taking him over to the side. Do a little bit of safety on the point here. Meanwhile, charge with plenty of ultimates to go by Hotba. That's a good thing he EMP, because now he's dead. Didn't look like he was gonna get hit by that, but ends up happening in the end. Trying to get Elsa here, can't get the kill onto the mini Diva, but it does provide cover for Hotba to get res. That's the thing, Nero actually barraged and lived, which is a credit to his ability right there. Then gets two kills on the way out. Chung Hunter is still taking the point right now. They gotta get on the point here. Another minefield. Yeah, finally Rio gets there with the minefield. The Young Joe Long oh, finally wow. finished Nero. <laughs> Great play from the McCree. Gets four in the end, and that's gonna be point A in style. Yang Zhao Long finally gets the two limbs onto the Fara and the Mercy gets the payload moving as well. Now will be his time to swap off probably onto the Zarya, onto the Widowmaker, of course. Why would, why, why would it be Zarya? Why wouldn't it be? There we go. Yang Zhao Long now on the Zarya. There you go. Okay, so they do think better of it. What happens is they see the Reinhardt 3-3 from Guangzhou, and they know that everybody has reset their ult economy, except for Among and Kyo, really. I mean, I like the swap a lot for Guangzhou, right? Because, ooh, now the shatter comes in. That was a big shatter, and that's gonna set up a nice team fight for the Hunters, and they're gonna win that one, but 
What I was saying is I, I liked the swap because ideally you'd be able to make the Hunters grind out this point and take more time off the yes. bank and leave them with very little for C, which is how you win the map defensively, honestly. Yeah, happy though with the stagger. So yeah. the, the issue is Chungdu won that so decisively off the back of Among's Shatter that now they have a new problem, which is that they've fallen very far behind the charge. Right. In terms of ultimate. Yeah, the swap not working out the way the charge intended here. Yeah, it should be a pretty quick point B here for the Hunters. Yep, that's exactly what you don't want to have happen. Or they'll get spelt but Nero down as well. There's You can't really come through the door and fight this if you're charged. They're going to try, but they get there with less than a meter to go. Leo down early, and yeah, you're just not going to stop the payload at this point. A little bit of time taken off the time bank. Chuck is getting insane value out of their ultimates. They yeah. did that entire B push with a shatter into a rally because they know Guangzhou is just hard reset. So there's no reason to be greedy. That's excellent discipline from Chengdu. Yep. So Char's making a calculated choice, but not panning out for them yet. Finally, some of the ultimates coming online for Guangzhou, but how long can they hold? As Shatter comes in, knocks on Hanpa, Happy, and Nero. Amon not able to connect with any charges due to getting booped around a little bit there. Nice for charge, they didn't lose anyone to the charge. But they're still in trouble here. Rally for Happy as they wait. Nero's got the grab, and he needs it to be a big one here. He needs it to not get eaten. Trying to walk up and poke through the rally. Yep, there we go. Grab comes in. Nero down, though, immediately afterwards. Charge pops the sound barrier. A little bit too late. They don't have the damage from the Zarya. They can't follow up on the grab. And Hunter's just rolling through the charge in the end anyway. They have the sound barrier. They're going to have no trouble finishing this fight. And this should be it. That is it. Great push at the end for the Hunters. And, you know, Charge had a good A defense, and it all kind of fell apart after that. I mean, when you both see both teams reset, you often don't see a snowball into the 3-3 that hard, but Chengdu, excellent discipline on their ult economy, allows them just to push all the way through B and C with zero resistance. Off the back of that one good earth shatter. Quick break, and when we come back, time bank time. Back. It's time to get started with Time Bank. Chengdu Hunters, a little bit more time in the bank for them. That means the charge will attack first. And what's the plan going to be? Right now, it looks like they're going to go bunker busting here, which is good because the Hunters are setting up that bunker again. Well, Nero, play the Hanzo one more time. One would assume the answer to that is yes, once they see that Junkrat composition. One thing we haven't talked about is this patch actually did increase bunk, uh, Junkrat's projectile speed slightly. Yeah, not a huge change, but, you know, Junkrat already uh, was pretty good at kind of filling chokes with just random damage. And now that it gets there faster, it's a little bit, little bit tougher to avoid than it was. A little bit. The Reaper's the one that got the big buffs, but at the end of the day, he's... He's still Reaper. Reaper. He's still Reaper, so <laughs> that's the problem right there. <laughs> Only good in very close range. Young Jolong, oh man, Rio with an easy kill early on. That's pretty big, but Amon, super low. Happy looking for another pick. It's a good start Ooh, they so get the far. Res. The res. Wow, I didn't know if they were going to be able to get that one. Happy looking for a shot. Takes a chunk out of both the members of the pharmacy, but doesn't get any kills. I was looking for one here. Oh, man. No Rodog, I think, uh, body blocking, preventing Young Jolong from taking that hit. Oh, there's one. Nice shot. Right around the corner. Not going to be a res on that one just yet. Uh, probably not. Let's see if he can stop that res from coming in. Yeah, they're going to dive on that one. Elsa takes a big headshot here. A lot of damage onto him, and he's down. Shu gets the kill. Now the Dragon Strike comes through and charge, looking like they're in position to maybe take a pretty quick point A. Yeah. Very fast indeed, Ryo not even having to use his ultimate right there. Trump wow. not coming down. Jinbu doing the classic Jinbu, trying to come back and get the picks on the Doomfist, but it doesn't happen this time. A short 
20 seconds, though, before we hit overtime. So by the time this Port Colas opens, they will have to stay on the cart. Well, that's the thing. In uh, hybrid, you don't really get any more time in the time bank for taking this. Young John Long with the tire as well. And when your team, your enemy team is in overtime, what do you do? You got to stay on the yes. payload, but you got to deal with the tire as well. You have to shoot the tire, basically. Pretty much. You're only hoping. Well, you can keep Shu on there and have him pop the breather anyway. He can survive the tire that time. Oh, they got Happy. it! Happy they just shoot it. it. That's crucial. What a clutch play from Happy. He needed to hit that. Hakma gets Among as well with the self destruct. Charge. Getting some real distance on this payload now. Not only that, they're managing. They actually do it, even though Evil Tall eliminates Happy in a 1v1 during the Valkyrie. Somehow Guangzhou keeps rolling. They knew they had to hit that tire and they delivered. That is so big. Happy really kind of showing his expertise. Oh, they get the pick on Yang Zhou Long. It delivers a bunch of grenades to their team, but it's okay. They got the healing to live through the mayhem. Among is in the back line harassing Happy right now, trying to prevent him from rejoining the rest of the team, but there's no one to pressure the payload right now. I mean, if they could be, that's insane. Dragon Strike preventing the engage for the most part. Jinmu down early, didn't get anything done on that Genji. And now Among and the rest of the team diving in. Yveltal really low, has to duck behind the wall. Got Jao Long down in the meantime, though. And Elsa out of the Diva suit, nothing he can do. And that's gonna be it. They're gonna take point B even. A little bit of tactical <laughs> coaching from Nero. Welcome to Overwatch League. Nero Usually works knows the other what way, needs but... to be done in this situation. That's right, he's been trained well. <laughs> Chengdu have an opportunity now to switch over to the 3-3. Guangzhou does not have that luxury. Happy makes a shift onto the Junkrat. He knows he's gotta spam them out. This cluster tank composition, maybe you can get that rip tire and finish the map. Yeah, that's right. Nero though, waiting for that Dragon Strike. Again, these narrow corridors make that Hanswell been pretty good. Jinmu brought in by Shu here. He's nearly got the whole hog as well. Amon gets a kill to Rio, but here comes the whole hog. Jinmu in a lot of trouble. Can he push back, but Shu maybe tunneling a bit too much, trying to push him into the Dragon Strike, but it didn't end up working out. There's another hook, but that's, a, that's not the person you want to bring in. That's the Zarya, she's scary, man. Oh, Rio in a lot of trouble now. And Hunter's with a good position on the payload, finally. Transcendence gets used. Hot bug can't be kept in the back. Self-destruct, maybe get it back again. Among Shield has got down, and now he is. Nero with a nice clutch kill there. Rio barely getting healed by that Mercy. I can't believe Chara is keeping the Ariza alive right now. Rio is living another whole hog now. What <laughs> an insane fight. Shu has been crazy good on the road hog on this push. Hook after hook after hook. The picks keep coming in. Happy's with a rip tire now. I don't know if Jung is gonna be able to stop this Doha. Oh, stun though. Happy has to back away. Uh, Flex supports and Roadhog. Name a more iconic duo. I won't wait. Happy with a kill onto Jinmu. And now it's a 6v5. Can they actually finish this in overtime? That would be crazy. They gotta stay on the payload. Theo's still alive! Moment. That Mercy heal. <laughs> oh, it's not enough. They finally get him. And I think this may be where the push ends, but what a push it has been. Nero pushes a Dragon Strike through there. That's gonna be a good amount of damage on the Hunters, but not enough to finally down. What a push for the charge. That is how you do it. And even though they didn't finish it, that nine times out of 10, what they just did is gonna win you the map. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What a push all the way to the end of C, nearly finishing that map. Wow. What's west of Westeros? Well, I'll tell you what, the end of that push. That's how far it went. <laughs> yeah, true story. Very impressive stuff from the Guangzhou charge. Chengdu having to match that is going to be quite the challenge. Great debut for Nero as well. Yeah, he's very cool on stage. Some players get the jitters. Doesn't seem like Nero has so far. No. He just, uh, he got the agility's haircut. He knew everything would be okay. <laughs> when does Dogman get the agility's haircut? I don't, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> he's a flex support though. I feel like Dogman's hair only. really belongs to the fans now. <laughs> that's, uh, that's true. We get to choose. Dogman's haircut is uh, will be decided democratically from now on. Or is it mob rule? I don't know. Hard to tell on the internet. Yeah, mob rule. <laughs> I think it's mob rule. Well, hunters have a chance to attack, and they do have a good uh, amount of time in the time bank, as we see the little translocator. Yeah, we saw the drop down EMP through the choke from that position before. That is a that's a neat little trick for you Sombra players out there. Pretty cool.
Nero with a couple rockets into spawn. Together, just to check out what the comp fail. is. Hunter's going with a bit of a bunker buster composition. Double sniper with the Roadhog now. All right. Nero still here, putting the rockets in early. Yep. Kyo on the Roadhog. So a bit of a difference now. Chengdu playing a very big pick composition with a double sniper Roadhog. Tell me, if you play select support, you need to know how to play Roadhog. Oh, and you need to keep your mercy alive too. Char down early. Hunters with a great opportunity to take point A, except Amon goes down. Nero just rolls through and runs him over. Nero with a kill into Jinmu too. Charge picking up the slack when their healer goes down. Chara turned over to the Lucio now to get back to the point fast. Oh, oh the Mercy had the Valkyrie. Hapu was like, I choose you, <laughs> but not in the way you want. <laughs> well, back in the Pokeball Evo call. <laughs> that's right, that's a spawn room. Veltal got the, got the, uh, uh, not the he, he's got his ultimate now, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, has the Valk online, but yep. Nero sitting here with a barrage. Less than a minute now for the Chengdu Hunters to push through this point and then pray they can somehow make it Whoa, all the way to Nero! <laughs> yoinked out of the sky! First bad. They call that the reverse yeet, I think. <laughs> the I mean, reverse the yeet. <laughs> the kids say. I don't know. Char down, Rio down as well. Hunters looking pretty good at the end of point A here. And yeah. That's gonna be the payload move I mean, here. 30 seconds remaining. There's no point to doing anything. Like, look at, look at Guangzhou. Wow. That was very nealistic of you to say. Yes, <laughs> nihilism no overtook me. Doing but look at Guangzhou. They don't have to commit the EMP. There is a payload that can be EMP'd with a minefield and a barrage right now, as well as a nano boost and attack visor. Yeah. If they can't win off of this ult combo, this should clear the card instantly. Oh, no. Their time is running out. All right, well, they couldn't kill Young Cha La. Happy's flanking. Yep. Oh, Hotpa, they see you. That's the translocate out. She gets killed. Yang Zhou Long with a big pick. They really needed to finish him off when they could. But the minefield is on the payload. Yang Zhou Long, though, getting two before he... They got Hotpa before the EMP. That is so big. Immortality field from Jinmu as well. He swapped over to the Batiste. Smart. Yeah. That was clutch, man. That kept people alive. Problem is, you still have an EMP nano visor, and you somehow have to survive that in the open on the bridge. Right. You. A lot of ultimates for charge. This is really going to be a trick right now. Yep. Can they use the whole hog to bounce people back? Can the self-destruct zone people off? Venomine activated. Nearly to the bridge. So it'd, be, it'd be crazy if we saw both teams actually push it all the way through. Oh, Kyo. His ah! hook got blocked. And Ava, oh, he pulled Hop off. He didn't get the EMP. He didn't get the oh, EMP. No. They tracked him down. Chungdu has stalled out the Guangzhou combos twice in a row. What is this series we're watching right now? This is, this is some of the most <laughs> insane Overwatch I've ever seen. This is, it has been very wild. Chengdu fighting for their life right now. If they don't win right here, they will lose the series. Yeah. You can't get a tie here. You need to win the map. Oh boy. Here we go, Among down early on. They have Guangzhou looking they pretty hacked good. the immortality field. Yeah, immortality field turned off by the hack. It is possible. We have the technology. Hunters trying to push forward still anyway. Char a little bit low. Has to back away. Charge holding the payload for the moment. There's a shatter. The Remember, shatter. Rio gets four with the shatter. And that's going to deliver the charge, the victory in this fight. And it should be the victory in this series as well, as this is where the payload will stop. Eichenwald goes to Guangzhou. And Guangzhou, they needed these wins. They're going to get one here. Their season definitely still alive. They've got to use this easier schedule this stage to propel them back into the playoff hopeful ranks. Yeah. And another map win in map four would be nice as well. You need that map differential. We'll see what they can get when we come back. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Welcome to Assist of the Week, presented by State Farm. All-Star is a time to flex a bit, and the Atlantic Division's Jonex certainly flexed on Huxley's Genji just after he ulted by landing a crazy sleep dart to stop him in his tracks. Then Jonek capped the play off with a biotic grenade to finish Huxley. Welcome back, guys. Right now, Guangzhou charged 3-0 in the series. That means they win it, and that means an extra map is just icing on the cake at this point. That's right. Nero coming in, fiddling, of course, while Chengdu burned. <laughs> I guess so, <laughs> yeah. But he played such a beautiful tune, man. Yeah, he, he, uh, he had a really great debut in the Overwatch League. Uh, a lot to look forward to, I think, from that guy. Yeah, I, I mean, talking to the coaches, they were very, they have been very impressed with him throughout the Overwatch League so far. He just wasn't eligible to play. Yeah. So making that debut doesn't look like he had a lot of nerves on stage, executing some nice Hanzo plays and Farah plays as we saw, and bringing, I think, a lot more flexibility over to the DPS position. Yeah. Good stuff. And what's been maybe the most wild thing about this series is that we've seen the Hunters out -huntered. You know, I mean, Guangzhou <laughs> just sort of played their style better. I think it's really fun to watch these two teams. It was really fun the first time we saw these two teams play together yeah. in their very first, their inaugural matches here in the Overwatch League. Both are expansion teams, and now we get that rematch, and uh, it goes the other way, Guangzhou winning this one. Yep, well, we got some substitutions coming in for the final map. It's going to be late, Young. Uh, better late, Young, than ever, as map four. <laughs> as they say. They bring him in, that's right. <laughs> And we got one more, Jishi Ren, he's here. Swam all the way, as we saw from that tweet <laughs> from China, to make it for this Overwatch map, subbing in for Among. I'm excited to see Jishi Ren on this roster. Yeah, should be cool. Yeah. Oh, he's never used that chair before. He needs <laughs> adjusting it. Yeah, and it, tricky. Yeah, this is a this is a moment too to see what exactly Chengdu's style is going to be without Among, because Among has been so much of the identity of the Chengdu hunters yeah. simply because he is the best wrecking ball player in this league, and so they played around that strength. Mm -hmm. What does a wrecking ballless Chengdu hunters look like? I guess we're, we're gonna find out right now. We will find out, but first let's take a look at some uh, stats from Nero in that last map. Checking out his debut a little bit closer on the Hanzo. Nearly 11,000 damage done. Look at that, no deaths That's on right. the Hanzo. From One hero to hero, know. as they say, on the <laughs> Overwatch from League hero stage. hero to hero, yeah. Is that what they say? That's what they say. That's what I said right now. Okay. And I'm sure you'll use it in the future. You are they. <laughs> will I? Yes, you will. Oh really, is that, is that a, a mandate now? <laughs> great, I can't wait. There he is. Either way, yeah, Nero with a, a great start to his time in the Overwatch League, helping his team get the 3 0. But can he help them get the 4 0? Hmm. Interesting stuff. I mean, Guangzhou, we, we came out looking at their record or and as well as their schedule. And sure. in terms of percentage win, they have the easiest schedule. As a percentage win of their opponents, they have the easiest schedule so far this stage. Yeah. I do think it's slightly deceptive, simply because they've got some games against the Dragons, and the Dragons have looked better uh, later in the stage two, so I think right. their current form is not really reflective of their actual power right now. So if we take that into account, they may not have quite the easiest stage, but this is still certainly, uh, you know, a stage Guangzhou could finish 4-3, 5-2, maybe squeaking into those stage playoffs, and they need those wins to get them back up into the standings and be competitive at the end of the season for one of those season playoff slots. Right. And I mean, at the end of the day, strength of schedule is, it's based on the past, yes. right? It's not based on the presence or what these teams might kind of morph into as the stage goes on, so. Yeah, there's a, there's a big difference between standings and what we would think of as power rankings, which is a more, in this moment, what are the rankings of the teams? And right. I think many people would have Shanghai, you know, in the top eight right now. I think so. I, I think they've gotten to that point. And I think they're well equipped for uh, playing in a 3-3 meta that does uh, have a lot of Zombra, so we will see. Well, here we go. On Dorado, our final map of this series. It's going to be our escort map. And we'll see what the teams decide to bring to the table here. Charge right now just showing us the 3-3 for the defense. But on this map, on this point, it's hard to argue against it. It is just really good at that choke. Yeah, that choke point does dictate a lot of what you can do on Dorado right now. Very rarely do we see other kinds of compositions. It's, it's even a better choke point for the 3-3 because it's sheltered on top. 
which means that you can deny sight lines from long range heroes on the attack as well. So it's yeah. it's very hard to not play 3-3. Three, three. Chengdu Hunters, though, this is going to be our look at the Jichiren 3-3 three, three composition, because they're just going to straight up play it. Yep, that's right. Now, important to note, Charge have not won on this map yet this season. They're 0-2 so far. So they'll have to look for their first win as well. Late Young pushing forward with that Zarya. And a lot of people say, you know, the, the reason Hunters haven't been playing the 3-3 three, three is because they've been waiting for Chi Ren to come into the lineup. And now that he's here, first thing we see, triple tank, triple support. But I suppose it does let you be flexible if you can sub in Among, change your uh, comp a little bit with that, a lot bit. Yeah, this is typically where we see teams defend in the mirror. Yep. It's right around this corner because the choke gives equal advantage to both teams, but defensive teams have more cover in this position. Yeah, just the way the market stalls uh, kind of curve around the payload there, too. Yeah. Makes it really easy for the defender. That said, though, Hunter's doing a good job of rotating around and pushing the charge back. Hero gets the grab, uses it right away. Are they going to be able to get kills off that? Kyo has his transcendence, and Rio brings a charge to take down Late Young, and that's going to push the Hunters back. So the grab, the transcendence, and then we've seen it a lot. The Reinhardt gets the charge to turn it around. Yeah, the reverse charge, the U-turn is, as Wolf was calling it in that last match, definitely a critical part of this meta. Uh, especially when the other team does have that transcendence because you need to get an elimination during right. your grab trance is there find a way to get them out instead and that is typically by charging one member back into your team pretty much well Chengdu pushing back forward again Lei Young getting pretty close to his grab, but it's five ultimates for the charge. Shatter comes down, happy with the rally to give his team that extra armor. Now the Shatter from GG Ren, and it's a big one. Hit the, ooh, he got hit by the Reinhardt coming the other way, or a shield match or something that stopped the charge. Chengdu Hunters still trying to push, but they didn't really get any kills out of that early assault. Now the grab comes in from Lei Young, but there's the self-destruct. Hoppin pushing it off the edge at the last moment. They lose Chara anyway. Looks like this is probably going to result in a point they take for yeah. the Hunters. And Jatiri there was the one who set all of that up, right? Because his shatter prompted them, the Guangzhou charge, to have to use the Transcendence in response. And that means that they had very little cover for late Young's Graviton Surge as the fight developed because they used both of their support ults so early. Made it very easy, even though Hotma tried his best to deny the incoming Graviton Surge by zoning him out with a mech. It just wasn't enough. They still get the elimination. So Chengdu snowballing nicely again off of an initial Earth Shatter. Yep. Uh, Hero. Hero. Not want to be down there. That's super aggressive, he got, buddy. He got, he got booped. I think so. Yeah, oh, another big Shatter comes in from Jichu Ren. And Hunters with another easy team fight win. Honestly. Jichu Ren, he took a while to get here, but he has hit two. Really nice Earth Shatters already in the first part of the first map. Absolutely has. Doesn't look rusty at all. No. Here for the Chengdu Hunters. They continue to move through B. Plenty of time remaining to close out this point. So nearly the end of point B already for the Chengdu Hunters. Ryo and Nero, Shu and Soon Happy will have the ultimates for the charge. Late Young. Not too long to wait until this grab, most likely. Barely charged up at around 80% here. Pushing forward now. Almost coming on land. There's a grab for Nero. Sound barrier comes in. Chengdu Hunters drop that self-destruct as well. Big shatter. A shatter gets dropped by Rio. Gets two kills off the back of that one as well. Kyo can't escape. And that's the hold that the charge needed. And finally stabilizing late into that push. Yeah. The help from... Nero's Earth Shatter right now. Guangzhou be holding on to now two ults as this fight starts. Char is still working on his, on his, but Chengdu really drained right now. See if they can get a Graviton off and force the trance at the very least. Jichiren really close to another Earth Shatter. See him do good things with those in the past. Nero a little bit of, uh, on his own on the payload. That was an interesting place to stand there. Rather than exposed. Late Young, looking to throw in the grab. Has to dodge Hotma's defense oh. So, oh, that's something. Happy in a lot of trouble. And now they're going to go down. The transcendence comes in from Shu, but it's a little bit too late to save his team. Luckily, that grab hits nobody. The payload does not need to be grabbed. Chichiren gets the kill on the Nero anyway. Now the sound barrier 
comes in perhaps a bit too late to save the Zarya. They're gonna try and hold this, Joa. They're gonna try and use those spawns, but they can't get any stuns to, uh, to couple with that self-destruct. for it, man. That doesn't matter. Hunters uh, get the kills anyway. I mean, that started because Chichiren was actually booped around the corner of Rio's shield, which allowed him to get a free shatter onto Happy, and that allowed him snowballed that entire engagement. Oh, Happy. So that's, that's sort of an unforced error on the side of the Guangzhou charge. Yeah, things looking a little bit sloppy here in the last map. And all the other maps. Well, <laughs> sure, but a bit more now. I, I am O. Here with another grab. A little bit of poking on the hunters. Also looking to absorb that grab if you can, Nero. A little bit hesitant walking forward here. There's the grab thrown in. All right, where's the follow-up now? Damage onto Rio. He has to back away. They don't get the kills. Yeah, they simply just didn't have the HP for Rio. Grab coming in. There's still a trance though from Shu. Rio blocks off the bomb. Ah, it doesn't help Happy though. He still goes down anyway. And that payload moving ever closer to the end of this one. Still about two minutes in the time bank too. This would be a pretty good time for the Hunters if they're able to finish it in this fight. Yeah, absolutely would. So I'm trying to make space here with oh, that tank Dread. line. He's down. Shu with a big pick there. And now without the Reinhardt, maybe Charge has a chance of pushing this back. They've got the sound barrier as well. Elsa being close to DMEC right now. Shatter comes in, doesn't really connect with anybody except for Late Young, but they can't get the kill on him. Not yet. Now Shu with the Transcendence as they get aggressive. Juju Ren. Almost back. He's walking into the room right now. Play Young with the grab once more. Rio in big trouble. His shield has like nothing left on it. Kyo down. It's still a 6v5. Oh, but the charge comes in. Not enough, though. And it will be Guangzhou trying to hold that. I don't know, man. It's going back and forth. Yeah, they should, should be, the be able charge. to hold there right now, go. especially with that sleep yeah. dart. Chara's just been dancing on the payload, making sure it didn't move that entire time. Yeah. It's a bit wild, but... Guangzhou gets it done. Yeah, and if you look at this too, Nero, 90% charge. Late Young had to use his Graviton Surge. Chengdu has nothing to stop this Graviton, and they've got nothing really to heal up against the damage from the Nano Boost. Pretty Chengdu, they've, they've got to hit like a crazy self-destruct or shatter here. I mean, Chichu Ren has really been delivering with the Earth Shatters on this map so far, so if anyone's going to do it, it seems like he's the guy. Oh boy, they all with the pin. Comes in, self-destruct. Tara down early at 65. Hunters have the advantage. All right, there's so many ults though, Doa. Yep, all right, grab from Nero. No kills onto that one. Jimu really low though. Maybe they can finish it, not quite. Rio, he gets taken out instead. And now the charge comes in from Gigi Ren. He's a little bit out of position, but no, his team there to back him up. Hoppa with the self-destruct. Oh, he dies! Hoppa, Kyo got him right as he was about to get back into his mech. Now the stop barrier is all Charge has to try to keep this going. The shatter from Rio doesn't get anything for them. And that's going to be Hunters getting it done. Did they do it before overtime, though? That is that is unbelievable that the Chengdu Hunters managed to pull that push off. And again, a lot of it was about Jichiren coming back with another Earth Shatter. Yeah. No time in the time bank for them, but they did get three points. And honestly, on a map like Dorado, that point C can be really difficult to take sometimes. So in a lot of cases, all you need is just to finish it at all. Yep. And they'll be happy with that. Does force the same finish on the side of the Guangzhou charge if they are able to do it. But it's a very different look for the Chengdu hunters than we've seen from them in the past. With Late Young and of course their latest player, Jitiren coming in. Right. That's a pretty good one too. That was that was some that was some nice Reinhardt play. Well, we've been hearing it the whole season that this guy was a, a good Reinhardt, but they just weren't able to get him here as fast as they would have liked. Now that he is here, might see a, a very different Chengdu Hunters moving forward. But Attack this match still a lot of the uh, the old hunters that we knew and loved from the first two stages of the 2019 season. I think what's scary if you're game planning against the Hunters right now is that you don't know which of these compositions they're going to run. At yeah. any point in time, they can just turn on a dime, put in new players, and you'll be facing a standard 3-3. But 
you know, at, at the same moment, they can always go back to that old style. That makes them really hard to game plan around. Yeah, you'll know depending on what roster is, is put in, but you won't know which roster they're planning on using for which map. Yeah, and they can they can turn it around very, very quickly, obviously. Yeah. In those short breaks that we have between games. All right. Here we go. Hunter's trying to defend here as the charge push forward. GG in a lot of trouble. Gets carved off from the team, gets carved down. Jin doing a lot of trouble too, and now just icing on the cake is Rio. Pushes forward for a charge. That is going to be a very quick fight in favor of Guangzhou. Yeah, and, and the danger to fighting that so far forward is that yes, you get two defenses, but if you lose the first fight that decisively, this is one of those ult opportunities in 3-3 that snowballs really hard. And you if you are conservative in how you use your ults now, if you're Guangzhou, this could be two points. It could be. I mean, we'll see. You don't really get much of an opportunity to defend at the choke you normally want to. You can see the payload a little bit farther forward. And now Shu with another nice pick onto Kyo. Setting up that 6v5 already. Jijiren in the room off to the side. The rest of his team has to go over to protect him. And that leaves Elsa a little bit vulnerable. Going to get demacked. Shatter comes in. Oh, that one doesn't work out so well. Rio is the one who comes up big this time. And he's going to keep pushing right now. They are maintaining a rally right now. Maybe use a little more than they wanted to with Shu's Transcendence. Yeah. But still, that's so much time to get through the rest of the map right now. Nero will be taking the long staircase with Rio and Shu. Take over that high ground before Chengdu is able to really get there back in force. They do get there just in the nick of time, though. Ooh, yeah, nice move by Chara. Oh, yeah. Dislodges a lot of the hunters, and that kind of shatters their defense, positionally anyway. Right grab. Legia trying to defend it. Here comes the self-destruct. Elsa gets one onto Shu. Now the grab comes in. Can they finish off Legia? No, Kyo there with the transcendence. That grab from Nero. I don't think his team was really ready to follow up on that one. I think that's one he would have wanted to save. Yeah, especially because Rio tried to charge in to get the pick, but was just booped away harmlessly to the side. Yep. Pretty much. Now the charge have to regroup. Still four minutes in the time bank, but they've lost a few crucial ultimates. They're only going to really have the transcendence. Hoppa trying to engage with the self destruct just to break them out of spawn. Chungyu responds with the sound barrier, though. And they're just going to push right back. They're going to try anyway. And GG runs barriers down. All right, that opens up a pretty decent shatter for Rio again. Late Young down, and that's going to be the push that gets charged back to the payload. Yeah, absolutely drawing them in on that push. Now Elsa, of course, going to just be staggered late right there. Shu delivers the final blow. So a little bit of a hold up there for the Chengdu Hunters. They did get about a minute and a half off that time bank. Yeah, I'd take that if I was the defender. It's pretty, yeah. pretty Especially considering your spawn camping right there. They didn't get a lot of progress. Yeah, you get another already. chance to defend on the high ground. Don't have much, but Jichiren has been doing some magic with Earth Shatters this game. Nero heading up to that high ground. Right. I mean, we've seen Amon kind of fill in on the Reinhardt from time to time, but it really wasn't his strong suit. Jichiren clearly the Reinhardt specialist here. Oh, he's just going in with the grab. Yeah, why not, man? Nero, he's going for it. Just drops that grab right on the faces of the Hunters. Kyo goes down early. It's a kill to Happy, though. They equalize. Now Elsa sends in the self to start. Rio stunned. Barely didn't get that shield up in time. Chara down as well. He'll you know, finish off by an uppercut from the Lucio, and now the Hunters will push back. And I'm not the biggest fan of Nero's last couple grabs here. It's been a bit rust, uh, rough for sure. Yeah. Uh, as a new player, though, still trying to work with the rest of the team. It looked like it was going to be set up well. The counter grab was strong by Late Young to prevent the follow up damage. So you right. have to give some credit for the Chengdu Hunters. But yeah, the plays have been a bit slow developing. And honestly, Doa, what do you think the odds would have been that we came in today saying Chengdu looks better at 3 3, but Guangzhou looks better at 3 BPS? I mean, I'm prepared to accept anything when the stage <laughs> changes over, but yeah, I would not have expected that. Would not have given you that answer if you would have asked me earlier in the day, but... We did know that Charge had some strong DPS players, but clearly they've been uh, polishing that a little bit during the, uh, the stage break. Rio nearly moved off, but not quite. Charge has to drop down anyway. They need to push payload. Here's the engage. 
No kills from the self to start, but GG Ren brought down to about half health before he gets healed up. Rio turns in with a shatter under the payload. Yes. Elsa nearly de mech barely escapes with his mech suit intact. Now, late Young did was the only one laid low by that Earth Shatter, so cut off a little bit of damage, but not enough stuns to really make the biggest difference right now. Both players approaching that grab. Grab comes first from Nero. Another grab from Nero, forces out the sound barrier now. Rio gets charged, but Chichi Ren out of position. Your hot butt finishes him off. Now the sound barrier comes in. Ooh, and also the transcendence at the same time. A little bit of layering on the support ultimates from charge. They need to win this fight. They will but having to burn both support ultimates to do it. Yeah, they had to, unfortunately, because Elsa had to self-destruct there. So once they saw that mech, they knew they had to bring in the sound barrier as well. But you'd have loved to have saved one of those for the next engagement. Yeah. Two minutes on the clock for the Guangzhou charge as they try to finish the map here. Hunters doing it just barely into overtime. We'll see if charge can get it done, too. Nero there again, taking the flank, trying to cover that payload as it rolls through. It does seem like he's building his ultimates really fast, so despite the criticism we've had, he's certainly playing a solid Zarya. Yeah, he's about 12 seconds faster on average right now. Yeah. Compared to late young. Pretty good. All right, a little bit more poking. Charged on the verge of having a lot of ultimates. All right, GGN drops the Earth Shatter. Yeah, nice Rio there, just a body block. They're not getting itchy trigger fingers. They're not responding in kind. Oh, Rio! Oh! Just a great dive onto Rio. They had him separated between the wall there. Cut off the healing, and that's going to be charge having to reset. That's going to be another 30 seconds plus burnt off the clock. Yeah, basically, Guangzhou right now in the position where they have to win every fight through the rest of the map. But they have the old charge to do it. Yeah something that they can work with. They're, they're gonna be up at six ults in this next fight eventually. That's the plan. Nero with another grab. As you can see, big ult advantage for the charge right now. A lot of damage from Nero. Up to 100% on that Zarya. It's the most damage you're ever gonna be doing. That Zarya, but when is the time? He throws the grab in. They're gonna try to focus on CC Red, but no. Kyo there with the transcendence to keep this tank alive. Shu responds in kind. There's a nice shatter from Rio. And now the self destruct coming in. Gets Lei Young. Can't get behind the shield here. So charged with a few more kills, but they lose their main tank. Uh, Hill goes down. Happy gets the rally, but it's just a little late right now. He's going to use it anyway. Another Earth Shatter. But it's just not going to be enough. Too many members of the charge just waiting. I mean, there's too many members of the Hunters, just too low health. I mean, that charge, even if he hit everybody, one person would have, been, would have been able to finish off two or three of them. So, now the charge with a really good chance here. They're gonna have to finish it in overtime. Chuck Yu Hunters with a few tools in the toolbox, ultimate wise to use. And the rally is huge. So just to get their place onto the cart, they can go ahead and use it early. Rally comes in now. Yep, of course, you can use that first. Use the extra armor to get on the point. Tank's a little bit cut off here, but the sound barrier keeping them alive. Self-destruct, no kills onto that one, Rio. Going for, oh, they lost Hotba. That's a big pick via Gigi Ren. And now Rio in a lot of trouble. Zarya Shield comes in, doesn't matter. The rest of the charge dropping, and it looks like the Hunters might be able to come away with at least a map win here. Char trying to stealth push the payload, and he's actually moving it a good amount. They're not turning on to him. They're too worried about Rio and his Earth Shatter opportunities here, but Chara down. They can't stand the payload, and the Hunters in the end do take a map. And those substitutions to a Hunters, looking like this roster can run a better 3-3 composition. Jichiren coming in and showing some impressive Reinhardt play in his Overwatch League debut. Yeah, that's some exciting stuff. We saw some uh, pretty exciting debuts for both teams here today. Yeah, it, it is good. And it's always here fun. As well. Yeah, it's always fun to see these new players come in. I think both players, for their first match, handled themselves admirably. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and man, what a fun series. Those first three maps were just- They were a delight. Out of control, man. I, I could cast that stuff all day. I, I love that. <laughs> that was great. It's fun to see some DPS action again. Absolutely was. Fun yep. to see all the tactical crouching. I'm really just here for the crouching, Noah. <laughs> yeah, who isn't, though? <laughs> you know? Gonna build up those quad muscles, right? Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. It's good to be in good shape. So, now let's send it down to Emily who has uh, one of our newest additions to the Overwatch League, Nero, on stage for the first time. Let's see what he's got to say after getting his first win.
Thanks, guys. And congratulations again to the Guangzhou Charge. I'm standing here with Nero, who just celebrated his 18th birthday last week. And we'll be celebrating his first win tonight. So, Nero, how did it feel to step out on the Overwatch League stage for the first time? Uh, it obviously feels very great, but I was really, really nervous, and I don't think I played that well, but yeah. <laughs> you heard I, that? You did. You played really well. And how did you uh, celebrate your birthday? What did the team do for you? Uh, I got caked in the face. <laughs> All right. Well, you've been with the charge ever since the beginning of the season, and this is a team that we know has very unique communication strategies because you guys have the balance between Korean, Chinese, and English. So how is that for you? Did you get to learn some Chinese and Korean? Uh, yeah. My Korean like understanding is pretty well, but I can't speak at all. And they can speak English pretty well, so we just speak English, and when they can't speak English, they speak in Korean, and I can understand it, basically. Okay. Is there a phrase or two that you could teach us? <laughs> no, I'm too, I'm too shy. <laughs> it's all good. Well, congratulations again, and happy belated birthday. Thank you, guys. Back to you, Monty and Doa. All right, thanks, Emily, and uh, yeah. Adorable. That's, was that? Adorable. That's, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's great. I appreciate that, you know, being able to understand a little bit of Korean after uh, interacting with those players. Remember, he's been practicing with the team. He just hadn't been old enough to actually play in the league yet. So. Great debut for uh, Nero. Great win for the Guangzhou Charge. Let's take a look at our player of the match brought to you by Omen by HP. It is going to be none other than Hotba. That's right. The Ba <laughs> is back. <laughs> you just have to love the style he played with over the course of this series, showing once again why he's such a versatile threat for the Guangzhou Charge. It does make them very hard to game plan. He does go back and forth, the D.Va, the Zarya, the Tracer, the Fara, the Sombra, all heroes he played over the course of this match. Yeah, really one of the most versatile players we have in the league, and he's just so good on so many things. This is his D.Va stats, as you can see, you know, a lot of final blows. A lot of, uh, and as many self-destruct kills as death. It's kind of fun. Yeah, that is really fun. Yeah. Of course, the, the D.Va probably wasn't his most interesting play of I, this match. Obviously, I think a lot of that coming on the far and Tracer early on. Yeah. But still, you know, he came into the Guangzhou Charge as the Overwatch League veteran, the leader on this team, and he delivered today. That's right. So we got one more match for you coming today. LA Valiant takes on the Shanghai Dragons. When we come back, that should be a pretty awesome series. So don't go anywhere. Lots more Overwatch League coming at you right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.